How y'all doing? Donald back here again, and so I'm gonna show you a thing that I did. Um, I made a decision a couple days ago where I decided I wanted to take the YouTube editing script that I had and build it out into a little more of a comprehensive program. And uh, so to start, yeah, I know, baby. Um, I decided I'm gonna do this stuff in Go, uh, mostly because I kind of I'm sort of familiar with Go, and Go's also got an amazing standard library. And uh, I basically have what you what it would have announced to is a Go equivalent of my my baby, good lord, of the same shell script I had before that was doing the YouTube editing. The main difference is being is that this one is properly handling the flag arguments as flag arguments that is like they have to be in a certain order and everything like it was was before kind of ad hoc um it's also doing a few other things where i can only do certain parts if i want uh and i'll kind of explain how the logic is working in the whole program as it is right now that's what we're going to be showing you today before we get started um, if you, at any point you like the video, be sure to drop me a like, subscribe, and share the video in case anyone else would be interested in seeing it. And with that, let me show you the goods. So, welcome to, I guess you want to call YouTube video editing script uh, version 2. Uh, so, now it's in Go instead of in POSIX shell. So, the basic structure of what it's doing is the same. It's just much more... Uh, it's got much more to it now. It's doing a lot more like sandy checks where it's like say if I give it a file path that doesn't exist, it'll throw errors, stuff like that. So you'll see I have um, a function defined here outside of main that I essentially use to do all of the checking of the file paths given to me or valid. And you'll see that if it um, if the file either doesn't exist or if the um, if it's a directory, not a file, it'll use the um, flag package in the standard library to print the default messages generated from the uh, flag arguments that I pass in. So the start of the actual program, I'm just defining a bunch of variables. And if you remember the original ver the, the actual shell script, this is most of these variables are exactly the same. There's the um, we have the uh, we got here the input path of the of the main like the main video that you're going to edit, uh, the path you want it to be outputted to, um, the path to the like little sub animation overlay that I use, uh, the uh, path to the video that I append to the end of the main video as like a little outro that showed like, the like. Um, the end screen stuff. And if you go back here, we have the what time to start the overlay, um, how long the fade out duration at the end of the main video should last, uh, how long the initial fade in is. And now these down here are new. So help is kind of a common program flag where if you pass in help, it just prints the usage. And then I have this preview one, uh, which what it'll do is down near the end, after the entire ffmpeg command has been generated, instead of actually using it, it'll just print it out to the console and then just exit. So it gives me like able to preview what the command is that's been generated. And this is how I'm sort of tracking the, um, the filter graph is generated. So you'll see here, this kind of block of lines is me using the flag package to parse the arguments given to this program into the appropriate variables. Now this is giving me a lot out of the package, out, out right out of the gate, and I kind of already explained this a lot of this in the um, a little Go video I did about like how to parse like like program flag arguments. Uh, but to kind of just st short and sweet is um, this is defining that all the valid flags. And it does some actual type checking to see whether the thing you've given as a value like makes sense. So like for a Boolean, if I give it like a string or something, like an actual like file path, it's going to throw an error saying, hey, that's not a valid value for that. It needs to be like a Boolean. So like 0, 1, true, false, TF, stuff like that. Um, then it's parsed. And this is where I'm checking to see whether the 
help flag was passed in. If it was, you just print out the usage and then you just exit. Um, this is where I'm checking to see whether they, if they gave an input path, because there has to be an input path to the video to do anything. If there's not, it just prints usage and basically errors out. Uh, also needs an output path and does the same thing. If, there, if the output path was not given, it just prints out the usage and errors out. Uh, I'm, here I'm checking to make sure that the input path given is valid. Um, using that function I defined at the start of the file. And here we're using the exec package to create a external process that we are going to run. And the way this goes is the first value is the, like the, the name or the path to the executable, the binary. And then everything else after it is a, like, uh, an, any number of arguments you want to pass into it. Uh, and then there's a couple different ways you can run the command. The, I think the most straightforward way I noticed was this method on the, on the command struct called combine output. So what it'll do is it'll run it, and then it'll return from this one method both the uh, result of the standard out, a standard output from, from the process, as well as the standard error messages. Um, and if the error was a nil, meaning there was an error, um, I basically say, I, what this is, is um, if you recall from the main script, I used this other shell script I wrote to get the full duration of the video in seconds because uh, I needed to do some things when I'm making the fade out effect on the main video. And if that doesn't work, I don't want this to run. Uh, technically speaking, I could only do this, I could just save this to only do it when I'm doing it, but we'll, we'll do that later. Uh, my first goal with this first port of this first, first version of this port was basically just to get it working in the same fashion as the original shell script, uh, but with just doing more actual sanity checking. Um, and this is actually a little better because in the other one I had to, I was making a call to a separate program to do this calculation because I didn't really have a way off the top of my head for digging around to do like float math evaluation in the shell. Uh, so I was using like a separate program to do that. But now since I, I'm doing this in Go, I just do it right here, which technically saves me uh, uh, from me running one less extra external command. Um, I'm calculating the f what time to start the fade out effect, which is basically just the full duration of the video minus the duration of the fade out fact that I specified. And you'll see these two variables come up a couple times, uh, final V and final A. So what this is, is the way the filter graph stuff tends to work is you um, load in an initial video and audio, probably from whether it's the input or some other formally processed data streams, and you pass them into another section of filters. Well, I figured the way I was doing these right now is rather than kind of hard coding what, what streams to work on, at least initially, I would track what like the main, what's the name of the main stream, main video and audio stream at this point. So by default, it's basically just the video and audio of the initial video. And you'll see where I change these um, at certain parts. So then we check and see if there was a, a path given for the overlay animation. So a little ding sub animation thing. If it is, it checks to see whether it's valid. And then you you should to some extent recognize this this block here. This is the filter graph a section of the filter graph I had in my POSIX shell that um, would take the overlay animation, do some offsetting to create the uh, new version of the video with the other with the overlay animation like uh, playing at the same time in a certain time frame. And it also is putting in the fade in and fade out. I could technically make that a whole separate thing, but that's that's further down the line. But you'll see here instead of me saying explicitly to use like the video stream from the first uh, from the input, it's using uh, whatever that I put into this particular placeholder. And what that is is it's final v. 
whatever final V is at this point. It could be the same thing as above. Uh, it might be the result of some other um, process that's already happened. It, it, it's, this makes it more, um, more flexible, more dynamic. Uh, everything else here is basically the same. It's just instead of having the you know, shell variables right there in the string, they're basically just being inserted via a, a printf statement. Um, you go down here. So you see I've created what I just called a node because that's essentially what these these all these different levels of the filter graph is, is they're nodes. And you basically can see like, you can picture the stream being fed from one node to the next node nor the process it more. Um, Technically, what that is implying is this is this is, it's far more granular than me having like this big chunk of a filter graph. But for right now, this actually works. So I create this node, and then I append it to a um, a slice of nodes, a collection of nodes. And then you'll see that I actually update final V and final A to be the name of the video and audio stream created during this nodes processing. Um, I should I probably shouldn't really have them in here like this. I probably should say like I I store like the labels for the video and audio stream in like a variable and then I insert them into uh the actual string with the same print f statement and then just set these equal to the labels, something like that. Um outro, same thing except it's checking for the that little like the black screen with the music playing um, creates the filter node and pins it and then changes what the final V and final A streams are. And now we're actually building the command. So right now I'm just, I just have FFmpeg hard code here. Uh, if you were to make this more robust, you'd have to do something where you check maybe say what operating system are you using? And depending on that, you would find the, path of FFmpeg a different couple different ways probably I have to imagine. And now I'm building the arguments passed into it. So by default the, the baseline is okay I'm passing in the input path and then I'm saying if, if that file is already there just overwrite it don't ask me. Now if, the, if there are nodes as if there are any nodes I have to do something. And you, if you notice um, when I was going through these those two big old chunks of strings up ahead, um, that they both end with a trailing semicolon. If I leave it as it is, um, FFmpeg will error out. And that's because the semicolons are used to delimit each, um, lay, it, like each node in the filter graph. If there's a semicolon but then nothing after it, it thinks that there's basically a filter called nothing and it errors out. So what this is doing is it takes the last node and essentially it removes the semicolon from the end so that the FFmpeg command will not error out. And then it just, I use um, this function in the strings package to take a slice of strings and just join them together with this, um, with this character, which I'm just adding new lines because that makes it look more like how the um, version was in my shell script. And then I um, am appending the final parts of the command, which would be, uh, let's see, we have the, where I'm mapping which streams to write out to the output file. And you'll see that I'm, this is where I'm also using the final V and final A. This is why I'm tracking to see what the, the labels of the, like the final, final processed video and audio streams are, so I know what to actually put here to tell FFmpeg which streams to write out to a file. And then I just, uh, I create the command. This is where I am using that preview flag to say if, if you had preview flagged on, you just print out the command that was generated and then exit. Otherwise it actually will execute it. Um, and then if for some reason there was an error, which initially that was how I was catching the trailing semicolon problem. Um, it'll just say there's an error, print the error, and then it's done. Uh, the only real downside to this right now is, so if I run the shell script, like the entire output of the FFmpeg command is kind of being vomited out to standard out, so I can see it processing. When this is running, literally all I see is executing command, and then I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of sitting there waiting for it to be done, 
Uh, I would probably need a better way to actually show like the the pro the progress of it. Some kind of rapper maybe who read the standard out as it's being written and then determine like how far along it is based on I guess what timestamp is working on versus the full duration of the video, something like that. And uh, this actually works right now. Um, I'm not going to run it because if I run this while I'm recording, it's gonna make my recording shit. Uh, but I can show you what the result of it was, which was, I believe there should be a file here called test. Yeah, so this test is the output of me running a, another recording through this. And you'll see that it ends up having the exact same editing done to it that my all my videos do at this point but it was done with this little go program versus the shell script so let me run it and was in here we talking five seconds in i think oh no oh, all right i think i was messing with this and forgot to actually let it process well you have to take my word for it <laughs> it, it actually comes out right I could take the risk to try to run it now, but I'm actually pretty sure it might make my recording shit. So, uh, there you go. This is my the GoLang version of my YouTube editing script. Um, it this is basically part of a bigger project at this point. Uh, I actually started to transition that draw text script that I wrote into a separate Go package, where the all of the functions for say building out the individual arguments of the draw text filter and then ultimately spitting out the full filter i'm putting it in its own um, package and then i'm also going to still have its own um, binaries that you can build and run in case you just want to run it itself mostly for the previews uh, but it's going to be kind of a a, a long a long-term project where as I'm figuring out what things I want to do to make these videos a little more uh, visually interesting. But again, I don't like editing stuff, but I like building stuff to do the editing for me. Um, I'm going to keep building all these little packages that I can um, say put import into the YouTube editing script and then use them to build these, build out these big, robust, dynamic filter graph nodes to do some what I'm hoping is some pretty crazy shit without me actually having to do any editing. Um, so that's all I got for you today. Um, if you like the video, be sure to drop me a like, subscribe, share the video. Um, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or why I did what I did, uh, leave me a comment down below. If you want to follow me on any social media, I got links down there. If you want to support the channel, and I would love you so much, I got some links down there below as well. And with that, Y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.